ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and MC, Sam Beeman. So how's everybody doing out there tonight? Woo! Yes, let's make some noise. Woo! Okay, let's make some noise for this right here. This is, uh, how many of you guys have been watching this the whole time? Yeah, okay, a couple of you. Have you noticed how it just, it drops out? Like, yeah. It, it, at any given time, it'll probably, you'll probably see like the, the MacBook sweeper or something come up there again. Uh, so do we have any technical people out here in the audience? Yeah. Good. Okay, so Casey, uh, we have a laptop there in the back. You need to check on that. All right, so I'm your host, Sam Beeman. How many of you guys have heard of some of the comedians tonight? Let's make some noise. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Well, I want to go ahead and, uh, and tell you guys that this show is sponsored by a number of great people. More Signs and Design, Preventive Dental Care, Chick-fil-A of Phoenix City. How many of you guys like Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Uh, Dr. All Day Chiropractic, uh, Image by Design, uh, Come Over Comedy Lounge. Hey, uh, Come Over Comedy Lounge, we got here. Okay, no, uh, no Come Over Comedy Lounge people in here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like you entertainment. Well, uh, so just by a show of hands, how many of you guys are here? <laughs> all right, all right, okay, I'll, I'll wait on some of you, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like that in a way. Like, it, it takes me a little while to get going, right? I mean, like, and this goes back to when I was younger. I mean, really, like, sometimes I just don't pay attention. I mean, back when I was in eighth grade, I'll never forget, I met with the career counselor for high school. I didn't even know it was a thing. So I'm sitting there with this career counselor, and she's like, okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and plan out your high school career. Here are your electives. And I looked down, and I was like, huh. Keyboarding 101. Oh, that sounds fun right there. Yes, put me down. Put me down. She's like, oh, that's so great because this is a new class. Great. So a year later, you can imagine my surprise when I walked into the room and I saw 40 typewriters. <laughs> I was looking for keyboards. <laughs> That was my reaction too. Yeah, and so the teacher of the class, she was a, she was kind of a harder woman, you know. I mean, she was she was shorter and she had a, a gruff voice. She kind of reminded me of that lady on the Monster Z, you know, the the boss. Yeah, she came over to me and she's like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "Well, I'm I'm, I'm here for a, a keyboarding class, but I don't see the keyboards." Ha, 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 you're a comedian, sit over there. So I'm sitting there working on the assignments, you know, I was learning the home keys, Clay, I was learning the home keys, you know, the A, S, D, F, yeah, so I'm over there just playing around and like, you know, just punching letters and she's like, I'm watching you, I'm always watching you. So when I saw Monsters, Inc., I was really surprised. I was like, wow, they knew my teacher. <laughs> yeah, so that particular class, I mean, you know, I went to the counselor and I said, look, you gotta, you gotta switch me up with something else. Like, I, 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 I really wanna learn how to play the keyboard. She's like, well, why don't you take up band? Here's the bad thing. I was in band. <laughs> there were no keyboards. So you think, you think that I would know that there was not one single keyboard in the whole school. So not only, not only did I not pay attention, but I kind of got picked on. Christy, you probably remember this. Um, Rich, you probably do too. So, so back in, when I was in sixth grade, okay? And I remember kids all the time, they were like, come on, let's fight, let's fight. And I was like, no, no, I'm not gonna fight you. It's against my religion. <laughs> it was the best thing I had, Clay. <laughs> It's against my religion. So I remember I went to the to the restroom and I had one of those hall passes. You know those wooden hall passes? Remember those that they used to give you? Yeah, so I, I had one of those. I went to the restroom and this kid like looked at me. He was like, What? I was like, What? Uh, I'm just here to use the restroom. And he says to the other guy, Did you did you see what he just did? He was like, Yeah, I saw it. I was like, what, what, what did you guys see? I was like, look, I don't want any trouble. He's like, oh, he's trying to hit me. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I'm not trying to hit you with a pass. Next thing you know, 
I'm pinned up against the wall, and there was a Jordache shoe <laughs> right up against my face. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> that was not the reaction I wanted. <laughs> Sympathy plea. No, so I got sent to the, to the principal's office, and he said, all right, you got the choice. Either you can get spanked by me or one of your parents. And I thought, I'll take my dad's whipping, you know? I know what that's like. You know, the last thing I wanted was the holy paddle, okay? <laughs> and it has nothing to do with salvation, by the way. <laughs> I, we were talking about, and you probably know there's like a two by four with like these big holes drilled into it, right? Yeah, and, and suppose, yeah, what was that noise that it made? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, right there, right there. Yes. <laughs> I love it when the audience is funnier. <laughs> And so, and so the myth, the myth was what? If, if, if they went to paddle you, what happened? Fire came out. Okay. Spoken from a child. Okay. Yes. Fire would come out of your backside. And I really didn't understand that, Clay. I really didn't understand that because I'm thinking, like, how in the world would they even know? Okay? You know, so, I mean, you're, you're in that position, right? You know, you're in that position. Like, how? would you be able to turn your head around to even see the thought? Like, what is this, exorcist? <laughs> you know, like, what's going on there, you know? So anyways, I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my dad, okay? I'll take my dad's spankings. And so dad comes up to the school and he's like, all right, son. You know, he's kind of like, he's kind of like, uh, like uh, Liam Neeson, you know? He's like, all right, son, what exactly happened? Dad, I'm telling you, I was I was set up. Somebody kicked me across the face. You mean to tell me you didn't kill them? You know, I just like <laughs> no, Dad, no, I, I did not fight back. And so basically, he said, okay, here's this here's the thing. This is what I want you to do. I want you because the principal's out there. I want you to scream every time. I'm gonna take my belt off and I'm gonna whip this chair. And I want you to cry out. Can you do that? I said, yeah, sure. So he starts to whip this chair. Ah! He's like, whoa, 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 hold up. He's like, not Michael Jackson, okay? All right. So then I came, I came out of the principal's office, and the principal says to me, he says, young man, did you learn your lesson? Yes, I did. He said, I hope you know how to act from now on. Oh, yeah, there we go, there we go. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have got some wonderful comedians lined up tonight. So I want to go ahead and get this thing rolling uh, with one of my, uh, my good friends. Uh, I believe he should be somewhere here in the room. Tim Bannister. Tim Bannister, where are you at, ladies and gentlemen? Woo, right here, man. Uh, welcome, Tim Bannister. Wow. Right, there we go. Yeah. that electric introduction, buddy. I appreciate that. Where's Tim at? Oh, there he is. He has a drill for this. Alright, well, it's good to be here. And, um, um, how's this thing work? There we go. Look at that. I uh, did it. It's good to be here at, um, what's, what's the name of this church? Lakewood. <laughs> Looking forward to it all week. Alright. Just kidding. It's good to be here. Good to alienate the members real quick when you're getting started. That's good. Quick, I've got a quick announcement, a couple of announcements before we get started here. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you see that projector is a little loud right here. All right, a couple of quick announcements here for the church here at uh, uh, Lakewood. Lakewood. All right, quick, um, do this one real quick for you. Hey, uh, just so you guys know, we're all in the sports and stuff, just for the, uh, a lot of you guys in the uh, Protestant community, this is for you guys. Um, there, whenever, uh, you can't refer to, you know, like last second desperation passes in the football game, you can't uh, can't refer to them as Hail Marys anymore. Just want you guys to know that. <laughs> Catholics get pretty ticked off about that. <laughs> all right, real quick, uh, some of you guys are church members here and go to other churches. I just want to make sure you know that you are required to hold the sweaty hand of the creepy person sitting next to you during the church prayer. Don't you know that. And 
And uh, oh, this is a good one here too. This is for your hair band fans out there. Got a lot of hair band fans here. Uh, pretty sure Jesus loves Bon Jovi. I think we're all sure of that. Uh, but living on a prayer is not an appropriate vacation Bible school theme song. So, and uh, last one, church potluck. You guys do church here. Y'all do Wednesday night meals, right? Am I right? Yeah, good. Thanks for the feedback. Appreciate that. Uh, just, just, this is out there. No one is specific really here, but uh, just want to make sure, uh, just to let you know. Please don't let your cat help with your help you prepare your signature potato salad. So, want to make sure you don't do that as well. So. Uh, that's something to do. I can just have a couple observations I like to do every once in a while. Um, sometimes you guys ever notice? You guys ever like look at a beaver? You ever look look at a beaver out in the wild? You ever seen one? You ever, you ever you ever think beavers ever make fun of other beavers that have small teeth? <laughs> hey, human teeth! You got human teeth. Those beavers are so clickish. Hey, uh, sometimes you do comedy like this and you think it's so quiet, like I said, the projector and the lights are so loud. I can hear, I can hear right now. Hey, I got a quick question for the ladies. And if you're a lady, hold your hand up real quick. A couple of you out here, good. Smart sure. I got a quick question for the ladies. At what point, ladies, in your life or maybe your career do you wake up one morning and you go, you know, I need to start wearing more leopard print clothing. I need more jungle attire in my wardrobe. Hey, baby, I couldn't help but notice your tiger strap tube top. You're definitely an endangered species. Ain't nobody gonna put you in the zoo because you're way too ferocious for a cage. Mm, the electricity is popping now. Isn't it? Hey, what's so, I just real quick, what's so great about Lake Superior? Just a regular lake. Decent you guys ever go to Captain D's? Any Captain D's fans here? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like Captain D's. You ever been in there and like, oh man, am I at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco? Or maybe, ooh, maybe uh, this is uh, the, the, uh, up at the fish market up in Seattle. And then you walk by and you see that 20 gallon tub of tartar sauce with the pump on top. <laughs> Gotta love me some Captain D's. I went to the bathroom one time at Captain D's and they had a, they had a uh, harpoon above the toilet. Just in case you want to do some illegal whale hunting in the Atlanta metropolitan area. <laughs> it's cool, officer. It's cool, Mr. Officer. Captain D's said I can do it. It's cool. And you guys ever been to a nudist colony? Anybody? No. Wow, what the... the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the nudist colony in the church. No one wants to admit to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know if some of you guys, but I was talking to a couple of folks later, I mean, earlier in the show, they said they had been to one. But if you don't want to raise your hand, that's okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to one, but I don't know if you're like me. You ever woke up on a Saturday morning and you're like, you know, I'd like to go up to the North Georgia mountains and do some, play some dodgeball in the nude. <laughs> Maybe do some leather craft naked. Am I the only one that doesn't think that's creepy? Why do they call it a nudist colony anyway? Is it like, is it like Jamestown or Plymouth Rock? I hereby claim this land in the name of the creepy naked white man. <laughs> so naked pilgrims run around with coonskin caps and corn on the cob sandals. <laughs> you guys are a very interesting crowd. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, I'm gonna look at the faces actually. Well, no, don't, don't like you with you, I think. <laughs> Captain B's, gonna come back to that a little bit later. Hey, hey, I, uh, I will say one thing, I'm going to be performing later on tonight. Uh, I don't think the other comics will be with me, but it'll be uh, later on tonight um, over in Columbus. I'll be performing at the Golden Corral. <laughs> Make sure y'all come out for that. You don't forget Golden Corral with the Wild West and diabetes meet at high noon. <laughs> I like the way your laughter just keeps going for about two seconds. <laughs> so exciting. You know, one day I'm going to be an arm wrestler. Any arm wrestlers here? Professional? Anybody? One day I want to be an arm wrestler. You know what I'm going to do? Because I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear a, a, a mask uh, over my hand and a beautiful sequin cape hanging from my wrist all the way down to my elbow. That way no one will know the true identity of my hand. <laughs> over the top, baby. Thanks so much for that comment. I appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. Golden Corral. Hey, I do have one more little announcement I want to share with you real quick. This is another one here. I like to go back to the church announcements. 
This one right here. Some of you guys will probably uh, appreciate this one right here. It's up here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, when they passed the offering plate at church, I want to make sure you guys know uh, this is now appropriate. Uh, Non-expired Kohl's cash is now authorized for the offering plate. <laughs> so make sure you put that. Non-expired Kohl's cash. That's right. How many of you guys like celery? Anybody? Any celery fans in here? What is that? Oh, God bless you, sir. <laughs> These observations here are amazing sometimes, I tell you. Um, I do want to, uh, nothing about celery, I just like celery too. One thing I always notice about celery, and if, if you guys really thought about this and really observed it, celery is kind of like the corduroy pants of the vegetable world. <laughs> A nice cabling. Sometimes you get up here and you're not doing that great, you start sweating. But I've been so awesome when I sweat. I, uh, I, did, I did grow up in the 80s a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys did. So any of you guys went to high school in the 80s, college in the 80s a little bit? Some of you guys? You guys are younger. Some of you guys are about my age. Right? I, I grew up, I love music of the 80s. Uh, I'm going to get out of here in a second, Sam. Um, 80s music. Uh, I love it all. Love. Um, actually, this is crazy. 11th grade, I was the vice president of the Paula Abdul fan club. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes out there. But I did like Sade. You guys ever listen to Sade? Remember Sade? Remember that song, Smooth Operator? Remember that one? What a great song, man. Remember, I know you, 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 if I sing it for you, you'll know what it is. But there's always that one part of that song that was always a little weird to me. It was always like, that doesn't really make any sense. It's that one part that goes like this. Coast to coast, L.A. to Chicago. Oh, <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. I don't think Sade was real big at geography, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're trying to say there. It's okay, Sade. We're going to mail you a globe. <laughs> Geographically intact. Uh, you guys are awesome. What an electric crowd. Is it, is it, how many people are asleep? Raise your hands. <laughs> Tell you one thing, I love wearing snakeskin pants. I'm the only one, ladies and gentlemen. Love me some snakeskin pants. What's cool, every once in a while, Clay, you'll see him later. He and I like to wear snakeskin pants together every once in a while because I got a whole closet full of them. And, uh, but what we do is we'll head up to the Atlanta Zoo. And you guys know what they, they call the Atlanta Zoo now, right? You know, they call it Zoo Atlanta. The play on words there just a little bit. So we wear our snakeskin pants up there, and I love wearing them over to the reptile exhibit because um, they treat you like an old friend. That's what I'm saying. Treat you like an old friend. Well, hey, that's about it for me, I think. Uh, should I do another announcement? Any more announcements I need to take care of? Anything? Oh, yeah, what is that right there? Is that a gift? A drawing? You mean do it? Mints. Mints. Oh, <laughs> you did mints. Hey, I will forget. I did. I did. I think I said this last time. But uh, don't forget uh, before you leave. Uh, we do have some mints in the back, but I just want to let you know it's only one per person. So don't take any more than one mint, please. Let's share, because God is watching. God is watching. So with the security cameras here, like quick. So let's give it up for Mr. Sam Beeman. Come on, Sam. God bless Sam. He's cool for the show. Sam. Only one man for a personal anymore. All right, Tim Bannister, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, who would like a man right now? Who would like a man? Oh, yes, right here. There you go. All right, anybody in the back? Okay, yeah. Watch out, Doc. Okay, there you go. Right here. All right. Okay, so. Uh, these, these mints here were actually brought by one of our, uh, our audience members tonight. In, in honor of the comedians, um, Clay, this is popcorn. Corn. You see it? You see it? This, that's a, that word, corn. Okay. Uh, you'll find out more about that later on. All right. So what I'd like to do at this time is uh, I'd like to pull up a couple of volunteers on stage, uh, preferably the adults tonight. So, uh, do we have any uh, outgoing people out there tonight? Uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm partially adult. Have you seen how tall I am? How tall are you, sir? Five ten. Come on up here. 
I think you made the height requirement there. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so I need one more volunteer, one more volunteer. Victor, would you like to come up here? Come on up here, Victor. Yes, give it up for these guys. All right, so, uh, so guys, I'm going to give you this play space right here. All right, so basically what, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do some simple uh, improv games with you, okay? Awesome. Awesome, yes. Okay, so uh, first off, I do this like every show, but we're going to start off with a silent scene. You get no words, okay? It's cool. It's just all about the relationship between you guys, you know, so have you ever done any mining? Yeah? Okay, cool. Perfect. So I need three suggestions from you guys. So who are they? Like, uh, are they ranchers? Are they astronauts? Are they plumbers? Plumbers. They're plumbers. Okay. You said plumbers, right? Plumbers. Okay. Good. All right. Just making sure I I wasn't hearing like pluckers. You know, what? <laughs> Plucking chickens. Okay. All right. Plumbers. And uh, what are these? Sorry. What are these plumbers doing? Something random. Astronaut training. <laughs> All right, plumbers, astronaut training, and where is this most random place that these plumbers could be astronaut training is? Where are they? In a snake cage. A snake cage. <laughs> wow, venomous. Oh, oh, yes, yes, that's right. It's silent, so you got no words on this one. Although, man, I really wish you did. Uh, these are, you guys are good. Okay, you plumbers, astronaut training in a snake cage that's venomous. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes, make sure that you, uh, yeah, cover your, yeah, okay. All right, um, so give my love. Put your hands together. Uh, 
They probably don't either. Okay. So SpongeBob and Patrick, and what are the SpongeBob characters doing? Building sandcastle castles. What else? Making hamburgers. Making hamburgers. Making hamburgers. Yeah, what, what was that back here? Krabby Patties. Krabby Patties. Okay. All right. So, uh, so yeah, Krabby Patties. I think that's on the show. Yes. What's that? Blowing bubbles. Okay. Um, so you guys are blowing bubbles. Um, that's an interesting suggestion. I don't even know how. Tell you what, let's go with the sandcastles. I do like that. Let's, I'm curious what kind of sandcastles you're going to make. Where are they making these sandcastles? In the Netherlands. In the what? In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands? Oh, Minecraft. <laughs> okay, I was just complimenting the audience about how. All right. Minecraft, you got, okay, you know, you know where the nether is, okay, all right, so, uh, yeah, you just, yeah, there you go, all right, so, uh, so Patrick and Spongebob are making sandcastles in the nether, um, and, uh, you guys just agree with one another, really, it's all about the relationship between you guys, all right, you know what's, what's happening here, but let's just make it about you guys, whichever one you decide you want to be, whoever speaks first, and you're building sandcastles in the nether. Nether. Okay. Okay. You guys ready? Yep. Ready. All right. Put your hands together. Give my love. Where are we? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it said Nether right there. Looks like a sky to me. <laughs> Looks like a ceiling to me. But nether. What is Nether? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, there's sand right here. You want to go to sand castle? Sure! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a bucket? <coughs> uh, yes. It's uh, made out of uh, stars. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? We want to go to the house. Okay. <laughs> Where's the water? <laughs> So we're going to keep this thing rolling here, and uh, with our next comedian, um, she has performed all over the U.S., including Canada. <laughs> yes. So, without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Kristen Weber. Wow, thank you guys so much for that nice, warm welcome. It was so kind of you, especially since none of you guys know who I am. Uh, well, like I said, my name is Kristen, and I will be entertaining you for the next seven hours. You should feel very 
hashtag blessed because I almost didn't make it here at all because what's up with the time zone, Phoenix City? I thought y'all were central. And then someone's like, no, it's Eastern. So I literally had to walk into a piggly wiggly and be like, what time is it? Anyway, is everyone staying healthy? I know the flu's going around. Everyone, you guys look healthy. Yeah? Good. Um, I, uh, I, I am a teacher. I teach music during the day and then, uh, and then do stand-up at night, which basically makes me Hannah Montana. <laughs> And uh, the flu's been going around uh, my school, and so somebody gave me some of those oils. Does anybody use oils? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're great. I have stayed so healthy. And also, I can now move things with my mind. It's <laughs> great. So anyway, um, this is my soprano ukulele. I think we can all agree. It's really adorable, right? I just want to adopt it and buy it a puppy. Um, well, I have this theory that you could say or sing anything to the tune of this instrument and it would make it sound happy. And I wrote a song to prove it. <laughs> Earthquakes, tornadoes, and famine. I got food poisoning from salmon. <laughs> While hurling out my guts, my boyfriend broke up with a text. Do 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 <laughs> Puking and sobbing. North Korea is under new my great aunt fell and broke her hip. Just a word of advice, if you are old, try not to trip. Do da do do da do. Bed sores and walkers. I ran over a turtle on my way home. For my birthday, someone gave me a garden gnome. What the heck kind of a gift is that? seen those things? They are so creepy. Now I can't even go to bed at night because I'm afraid it's going to come alive and stab me in my sleep. Do, 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 do. I'm really tired. There's lots of tragedy to keep me up at night, but I found a way to make everything all right. My ukulele makes the world so bright. Do, 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 do. leeches and boils. Baptist church, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, my ukulele makes the world so bright. Do 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 do. Perfect health is the slowest way to die. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you guys been there? Okay, I'm so sorry if you have. It's designed like a labyrinth, so it's like you get in, you can't get out. And it's weird because they don't put parking spots like in, in any of the buildings, but then the highway is a parking lot, so it makes up for it. Um, but I actually moved from Colorado. Anybody been there? Okay, yeah. Do you not love the winters here? I have had more snow days in Georgia than I ever did in Colorado because what they do here, I guess, when the uh, temperature drops below 50 degrees and there's a cloud within 300 miles, they're like, we probably shouldn't risk it. And they close everything. Um, I've actually moved around quite a bit. I, uh, I was raised in another country. Some of you guys might have heard of it. Um, called Texas. Anyone been there? Yeah? You guys have been there, right. Okay, good. Um, and then I moved right out of college. I actually moved to Los Angeles. And uh, I miss it there. I actually miss Los Angeles. I miss the random things that happen when you live really close to Hollywood. Like this one time, I was just walking down the street and these paparazzi jumped out and they started taking pictures of me. Um, no, to make a long story short, if about three years ago in May, you guys saw a tabloid picture with a caption that read, Anne Hathaway really lets herself go. That was me! <laughs> for probably the worst reason ever. Girls, why do we do this? I moved there to be closer to a boy. 
my soulmate, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> there were signs we were meant to be together, okay? He got out of jail the same year I got out of high school. And then again the year I got out of college. And I have a hereditary iron deficiency. Really? A gasp? Is everyone who's gonna get that joke gotten that joke? Yeah, we can move on. Perfect, great. Um, so I never thought I would uh, be a stand-up comic or do anything on a stage because um, I've always been afraid of speaking in front of people, which is a pretty common fear. Um, and I'm gonna share with you guys what I learned worked for me, and you are absolutely free to steal this if you ever find yourself saying words in front of other humans. So, what I'll do if I'm on stage and like my jokes are falling flat, I'm not connecting with my audience, and I'm just kind of dying a slow death by public humiliation, <laughs> I will say, I want to switch gears now, and what I'd like to do is pray. So if I could, just have everybody close their eyes and bow their heads, and then you just leave. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I only have to do it twice, we'll see how tonight goes. I think we might be okay. Um, so I was thinking about, because I just have like random ideas on like advice and stuff uh, rolling through my head, and I, uh, I was like, you know what? I want to give back to the world that has given so much to me. And I figured the best way to do that was to take all the advice I thought of and put it to a song uh, with my very tiny ukulele. So um, with that said, I would like to say, you're welcome. This is called The Advice Song. Oh, and just a little like heads up on how like the next 15-ish minutes is gonna go. We're gonna do another song, a few more jokes, and then we're gonna close with another song, okay? It'll be just like an episode of Barney. <laughs> life is hard, life is really crazy. It'd be easier to just eat Chipotle and be lazy. But I thought to help you out, it might be nice if I gave you If you're getting something out of the oven, wear an oven mitt, or you'll lose fingerprints every time. If you're like, Kristen, that is good advice, but it's too late. I already lost all mine. Well, then you can fully commit to a life of crime. <laughs> Your favorite animal should be an otter. I know that may come as a shock, but they have a secret pocket inside of their skin where they keep their favorite rock. That little fat nugget alone makes me way happier than any amount of drugs or alcohol ever could. <laughs> People who say you can be whatever you want need to tone it down just a little. It's a lot of work to try and reach for the sky when realistically most of us are just meant for the middle. <laughs> so if at first you don't succeed, try dreaming smaller. <laughs> If you're only 5'1", you ain't gonna be a basketballer. <laughs> but you can dominate at mini golf. That's a fun game. For like the first four holes. Then we all wish we had gone bowling. I'm really bad at both games. Actually, I figured out if you switch my mini golf score with my bowling score, I'm the best at both games. That's a really intelligent joke, you guys. Let's bring it back down. Eating at Waffle House is like having breakfast in a urinal. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a point of urinal. <laughs> it's true. I've only been there once, but this was my one thought. Don't go there unless you've had your hepatitis shot. <laughs> Life is hard. Life is really crazy. It'd be easier to just eat Chipotle and be lazy. I have one more thing to say before I leave and go to Sonic. Never, ever, ever take advice from a comic. <laughs> wow, thank you, thank you. Um, so, uh, I was gonna say something super, super smart here, and I totally forgot what it was, but um, <laughs> I forgot my transition completely as I was putting my ukulele away. But I, um, I also, uh, New Year's just happened, right? Did anybody make any New Year's resolutions? Like, we always do something, right? Anybody's resolution to exercise more? Mine was. Like, I tried. 
So I, in the past, I always do that. I always try new things. Um, so like last year, um, my roommate at the time uh, convinced me to join this fitness cult called CrossFit. <laughs> do they have that here? Yeah, okay, if you haven't heard of CrossFit, it's like this military weightlifting boot camp type thing. Basically, you pay them money and they make you do things that you could do for free in a North Korean prison camp. <laughs> The best thing I've ever done for fitness, though, was um, one time I, um, I took a uh, hip-hop class at a YMCA in Flowery Branch, hashtag thug life. <laughs> no, it was great. The class was this weird mix. It was like me, some moms, Daryl, the stay-at-home dad. And then the other half of the class was all part of this gang called the AARP. <laughs> You gotta watch out for the ones who are really deep in. They wear red hats everywhere. Yeah, nobody ever gets that joke, but I keep it because it's the only joke in my entire set that my grandma gets. Um, so anyway, half the class is there. Like, we're here trying to be more hip. And the other half of the class is like, we are here trying not to break a hip. Um, I was not, shockingly, uh, I was pretty bad at hip hop. Um, I'm what doctors call severely Caucasian. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, like growing up, I was like always that little pale kid with freckles. And nothing against freckles, I think they're great. But when you're a kid with freckles, grown ups say the weirdest things to you. I always had adults coming up to me and being like, sweetie, don't be ashamed of those. Those are angel kisses. I'm about to be very real with you guys. When I was about seven, an older lady uh, came up to me at church and said that to me, and I looked her straight in the face and I said, well, then I've been molested. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> I had to test it out somewhere and see. Um, you can hold the emails. The gasp was enough. Thank you. Um, so anyway, you should have seen my parents' reaction when I said that. We had to like change churches, change cities, denominations. We are not Catholic anymore. Um, and uh, my parents, I was raised um, in a very strict Christian conservative household. Um, one year for Christmas, I got everybody t-shirts that said, judge us, we are judging you. <laughs> and uh, my parents, <laughs> some of you guys just got that. And my parents did not want anyone brainwashing me growing up, except for them. So they homeschooled me. Any other socially special people here today? Homeschoolers were not taught this, but this is how we raise our hands. Yeah, very good, you guys were taught, good. Anyone else? All of you guys were educated on the Devil's Playground? Yay! Oh, I'm sorry, that was a homeschool high five. We're gonna give it one more second. They are just now getting it. Now the thing with homeschooling though, um, I liked it, but uh, you just tend to be behind with everything. So, um, like pop culture and everything, I had to catch up with music, because we listened to all acoustic music growing up, because as we all know, Satan lives in an amplifier. And uh, so I've been like catching up on the different genres, and I teach music, so some of my students were playing uh, rap. I kind of like hip hop, I like rap, but I cannot pull it off. When I try, I end up sounding like a Disney character. I'm like, and when we get down to the clubs, all the girls, they be going, ah. Little Mermaid fans, anybody? Yeah, right. I was not allowed to watch that movie growing up. Not because of the witchcraft and stuff, but because Ariel rebelled against her father and lived. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm about to pull out uh, my other instrument and uh, get out of here in just a second. But I actually, um, uh, was it space astronaut plumber training? You're reading them. I actually uh, wrote a couple advice books for teen girls. If at this point into my set you still think I should be speaking into the lives of teens. Um, so, uh, but I have worked with youth for many, many years now, and um, I. It is a tough day and age to be a teen girl. They are dealing with things that like I, we didn't have to deal with growing up, like social media. I'm constantly having to tell teen girls, look, your worth is not found in the number of likes, follows, and retweets you are getting. 
It is found in your ability to bear sons. <laughs> That's not what I tell them. I give them the same advice I give everybody, and uh, that is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and don't go to a dentist because you have a coupon. <laughs> So anyway, I brought a few copies uh, with me today, and I will have them in the back. Um, all the proceeds are going toward um, a extended mission trip I'm taking to Bolivia. I'm actually going there to teach this summer for a couple of months. And I did that thing where I was like, if I ever hear of a school that in somewhere that needs a music teacher, I'll go. But here's the kicker, they never need music teachers in schools overseas. And then I have a friend who runs an orphanage in Bolivia. She's like, actually, this school down there, they need a music teacher if you want to come for a couple months. And I was like, I will. I will honor my word. So I'm going. Um, so anyway, these will be back there. I will be happy to sign them. I always sign them Jennifer Lawrence, just in case you want to resell them on eBay or anything. Um, but I have to go, uh, it'll be just a second, I have to go over there in that nice leopard print. And Tim was talking about at like what stage we like lower ourselves to leopard print. Honestly, clearance. That's what it was for me. For that right there. That's when we lower ourselves to leopard print. Um, so if we could, can we just have a round of applause for awkward silences? Because that's what we're going to have. So yeah, awkward silences! his prayers went on and on and 
on. One time he prayed for everybody in China, by name. <laughs> so this is dedicated to all the Mr. Clarks out there, and I used a song that was in a, a Disney movie a few years ago. You might recognize it, um, but I am aware that I'm about three years too late um, with this parody, but here it is. The servant goes on during service today, eyes are wandering, attention strayed. Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people leave, and our preacher, neither would he. Our stomachs growling as we think about the things. Pastor says we're done. Yes, but first, Mr. Clark's gonna pray. <laughs> We're doomed, it's already past noon, looks like lunch is gonna be a fast. Conceal, don't feel, sit still, don't laugh. This too shall pass. <laughs> Say amen. Say amen. Please let this prayer end. Say amen. Say amen. Or at least. My grandma's snoring and she's drooling on the ground. My brother's communion cup is in tiny fractals all around. My mom and dad are making threatening eye contact. Homie's blessing a goldfish now. I'm sneaking out the Basically, these are the best skits uh, from that show over the course of eight years. Uh, Stephen Kendrick is in there, and Tony Nolan, um, some people that you may or may not know. Uh, but, hey, I'd like to give this out to somebody tonight. So, uh, who's having a birthday? Is anybody having a birthday today? My friend Ethan. Your friend Ethan! <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> is he here? Oh. Alright, well, I'll tell you what. Becky, Becky Adderhold. I believe your birthday was yesterday, right? Yes, all right, so uh, Jack, could you take this to Miss Becky? All right, give her that right there. All right, very good. And uh, I would not be remiss if I did not sing Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Becky. Happy Birthday. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> Daddy gave you a thumbs up on that one. Daddy gives you a thumbs up. All right. Uh, well, hey, I've got a couple of uh, other things that I want to give away here real quick. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, just by a show of hands, who likes, uh, if I were to ask you, who was a cat lover? Who's a cat lover in the room? Okay, all right. Wow, we've got like a few. Okay. What about what about dogs? Dogs? Okay, a majority of the room. All right, so, uh, uh, let's see, Caesar. <laughs> Caesar, yes, the two pute. No, uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Um, so, what I have here are some, some prizes I want to give out to, uh, to some of you guys. Um, and these are basically from the Goodwill. Um, we're on a budget, people. So, <laughs> yes, and believe it or not, I actually shop at uh, at the Goodwill quite a bit. And oh, look at this! I love it. Oh, love it. this! <laughs> <laughs> look at this! Oh, I love it! It's great! It's wonderful! It's a blue wall! I love it! The logo has disappeared. Tech support. Hello. Okay. Yeah, so, so if you were to go around my house, you would probably see like a number of things in the house, I'm not kidding you, that still are priced, okay? I am not even joking. Have you, have you shop at radio. Like your radio, yes. Yes. Like your radio, I'm sorry, I forgot to wipe that off, okay. Yeah, because good. <laughs> She's like, look, it was Christmas, okay? You could have at least wiped off that price tag, okay, so. All right, so uh, so I have something special here for uh, for somebody in the room. Um, let me see here. Who is the uh, uh, who is the oldest person in the room? Who is closest to ninety? I don't think they want to share their age. Okay, all right. So <laughs> <laughs> where are my dog lovers again? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, yes, you, sir. Uh, speaking of dogs. Uh, come on here to the stage. <laughs> As you can tell, he uh, he has his he's sporting his dog's hat here. This is uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna randomly reach here in the bag and see what I have. Oh, oh no no no! Oh here we go! Oh look at this a trophy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can you read that for everybody? I didn't know it was the best grandma. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, it's the world's best grandma. There you go. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, thank you, thank you. World's best grandma. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, you, sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah, come on up here. Come on up here. I can see. Uh, I tell you what. Um, how about? How about? Uh, I'm just gonna let you just reach in the back. You just grab it. You know, just reach in there and just just grab it something. These are, yes, these <laughs> <laughs> ears. <laughs> Big ears. Uh, you think you might could use those? Yes. Probably. Okay, all right. Yes. <laughs> What's your name? Eddie. Eddie, give it up for Eddie. <laughs> all right. All right, so I got, I got one, more, uh, one more left in here. One more left in this bag. I need the manliest man. Mike, where's Mike? Uh, Mike, come on up here, Mike. Mike. Mike, I got something for you. I got something for you right here. Okay. Uh, Mike, I just need you to reach in there. All right, show everybody what you got. Oh, look at that. This is, uh, oh, which carrier is this? This is Love A Lot. This is Love A Lot. What's that, Mike? Love on Mike. Love on Mike. Yeah, there you go. And believe it or not, it still has the green barb in there. Okay, all right. So uh, give it up for Mike. Oh, good. Okay. Well, you know what? We gotta keep on going with this show here. And uh, I'd like to bring up my next comedian for the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the pleasure of hearing him for the first time about a summer ago, which was uh, actually kind of weird because uh, my hearing was stopped up that night. Uh, so I, the whole time I was saying to my friend, wow, he's really good. He's really good. He's like, dude, you gotta calm down. You remember that, Rich? Yeah. Yes, yeah. He can vouch for that. I mean, after the show, I came up to him and I was like, you are so funny! And Cyrus was just, just looking at me like, okay, dude, all right, just give me some space, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
this particular comedian has uh, actually been auditioning with America's Got Talent. So, hey, you never know, you may be seeing him on TV. Please welcome to the stage, Cyrus Steele. <laughs> Kids doing? We doing okay? All right, we'll, we'll keep in touch with you guys. I, I see you got dolls up here too, filling up the empty seats. I like that. I, like that. I, I just, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you guys having me here. Um, I'm actually from Savannah, Georgia. Originally from Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, calm down, calm down. Yeah, I, I like Savannah, but a lot of my friends will ask me about whenever I go to visit Savannah, like, are you ever worried about, you know, getting hit by a hurricane whenever you visit Savannah? I was like, why, why do you want me to get hit by a hurricane? Like, that's, that's a little sadistic, but I, I'm like, no, we're not really worried about hurricanes in Savannah. Because, like, we've been hit so many times, we've actually become desensitized. Yeah, like, usually I, I, I tell them, usually they send, like, somebody from the Today Show, like, Al Roker to scare everybody in Savannah. You know, he'll be like... <sighs> We're gonna have wind gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour. We're gonna have torrential rain. We're gonna have inches of torrential rain, and that's that's the weather in your neck of the woods. <laughs> and then I actually have somebody from Savannah wearing Bermuda shorts, a Hawaiian T-shirt, smoking a cigarette, and walking his dog. Like, yeah, y'all stay inside. It's very dangerous out here. Very dangerous. <laughs> That never scared me. What scared me as a kid was the way they would report on the hurricane. Like when I was a kid, they would talk about the eye of the hurricane. Watch out for the eye of the hurricane. You don't want to get caught in the eye of the hurricane. That used to scare me. I don't know if that scares you, but that used to scare me. I'd be in my room praying, Lord, please don't let us get the eye of the hurricane. Let us get the leg or the pinky toe. Please don't let us get the eye of the hurricane. Then when I realized the hurricane was in fact coming, I would change up my prayer and be like, okay, if we do get the eye of the hurricane, Lord, let it be a lazy eye. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, like I, and I can speak on that because I do have a lazy eye. Like some of you on the front row may have noticed because you don't know who I'm looking at right now. I just want you to know neither do I. I'm talking to you. Uh, stop having a lazy eye, people. Like you guys get to do things that I don't get to do, you know? You guys probably take this for granted. Like you go to the movies, you get your candy, you go up to the concession, and you're like, let me get three of those and a medium popcorn. And it's a beautiful thing, I've seen it, it's wonderful. I do not have that luxury. Like, I have to be very, very specific. Yeah, I can't, if I go, uh, let me get three of those and a medium popcorn, the only thing the concessionist gets right is the medium popcorn, folks. Yeah, everything else is a guessing game. Because I'm like, I remember one time I was like, okay, uh, let me get three of those, and he gave me like Starburst and the Milky Way bites. I was like, sir, I asked for Goobers, why didn't you give me the Starburst and the Milky Way bites? He was like, well, at the time of the order, sir, one of your eyes was looking at the Milky Way bites. <laughs> I don't have the pride to correct them, so I go back to my seat, which is also confusing because the lights are dim and it messes with me because I go to sit next to the girl that I came with and uh, the lights come up. You might have been there. You might have been there. Yeah, lights come up and it turns out I've been sitting next to an 80-year-old woman the whole time. <laughs> which I started to feel a little queasy about that because at one point we were kissing during the movie. <laughs> don't judge me. Don't judge me. Yeah, but the girl that I came with, she's looking up at me like she's one row ahead of me, like, really? Really? I was like, why didn't you say something? You know how my eyes are. You, why didn't you say something? She's like, I did, but you and your new girlfriend were like, shh, you're being rude. <laughs> so we broke up. Now I'm dating the 80 year old. Uh, just out of How's that going? Oh, she has good credit. Thank you, friends. <laughs> having a lazy eye also, yeah. Like I went to one job interview, the hiring manager took one look at my lazy eye, he was like, you know what, if his eye is lazy, what can we really expect of him? That's a sign from God. It's like, sir, I'm not deaf, I just can't see straight. But then like, I, I realized I had to find jobs where having a lazy eye played to my benefit. So that's when I became a crossing guard. Yeah, that's right, you guessed it. I was the only crossing guard that could look both ways without turning his neck. I'm saving lives. But like I said, I am from Savannah, and of course, we get, we get a lot of those hurricanes. There. I don't know, we have any middle children in the audience? Any middle children? Yes, sir. Usually they're in the back, so I'm glad they let you come up front, sir. How are you doing? All right, so what's your name? Jack. Jack? Okay, let me know how I'm doing during the show, okay? If I see you doze off, I'll know. I'll know. 
Yeah, are you are you an LA Dodgers fan? Oh, okay, okay. I'm an LA Lakers fan. Jack, I have to do this show though. They're they're gonna get upset with me. I'll be back though. Uh, yeah. So like I said, I'm from Savannah, and one of the things that happened to me, Jack, as a middle child. This is how I knew I was a middle child. Because, you know, no parent loves every child the same. They say they do, but they don't. Like, I realized I was a middle child during a hurricane. My mom forgot to get drinks. It was during an evacuation. She looks across the street. She sees a big lot, and she yells out, out of seven kids, my mom yells out, Cyrus, go get drinks. <laughs> Cyrus, go get drinks. Hurricane category five. I had to jump out of the car, run across the street, get drinks for everybody. And I realized in that moment, like my self-esteem, my self-worth, in that moment my mom was basically saying, if I have to lose one child, I'm okay if it's you. That's when I realized I was a middle child. Yeah, but uh, I, I tell you, like, you know, growing up in Savannah, was, it was a lot of fun. I like to go there to visit because it's very quiet. Atlanta is a little, little crazy, it's a little busier. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the things I, I, I like to talk about is uh, going to church. Because like I grew up, uh, growing up I went to a predominantly uh, black church. You know what I'm talking about, right, Jay? Yeah. Yeah. We missed you last Sunday. We missed you. Yeah. yeah, I went to a predominantly black church, growing up, and then of course like now I go to a more racially uh, diverse church. But my friends will ask me, white friends will ask me, like, Cyrus, what do you think the biggest difference between a black church and a white church is? And I was like, well, uh, it's very simple. One is white and one is black. What's the problem? What's the problem? He's like, well, what do you think like the main differences are? And I was like, I think it's the music. He said, like, what do you mean? I said, well, sometimes y'all have a slow tempo for the same song we have a fast tempo for. He's like, what song are you talking about, Cyrus? I said, well, take the song America the Beautiful. He's like, yeah. I said, whenever I hear that, I keep waiting for Frank Sinatra or Michael Buble to pop out. And he's like, why do you say that? I said, because y'all sing it like this. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber ways of gray, for purple mountains, majesty, above the fruited plains. America, America, God shed his grace on me. I am crowned by good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. I didn't say that for a pause. I actually found it annoying. I do, I do, Jack. I found it annoying because I told my friend at my church that same song is four hours long. I don't know what it is. At a black church, we will enunciate every word and every syllable to that song. I told my friend I learned half the alphabet from the way my pastor sings a very pretty beautiful. He said, how is that possible? I said, because my pastor sings that song like this. I don't know what this does, but he has to do this before it's Oh, beautiful, thank you, Lord. Oh, spacious God. Oh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, beautiful. So did he just start again? Oh, spacious guys. Now, I don't know why, but at a black church, we will take surveys in the middle of the song for no reason. Oh, beautiful. Oh, spacious guys. How many know this guy's a spacious? Go on and do it. Go on and do it. I think I need to know doing sir. But I told my friend, I said, sometimes if you come on a good Sunday, he will give you a sermon in the middle of the song before the actual sermon. He's like, what? I said, yeah, you will get a sermon in the middle of the song before the actual sermon. He's like, how is that possible? I said, it'll be the same song. It'll be like, America, sweet old, I said, sweet old America, God done shed, I said, God done shed his grace on thee. Yes, he did, Lord, and crown that good, because he wants you to be the head and not the tail. Because he that within me, I said, great is he that within me, and he that within the world, and I before he accept that to see it sometimes why, and holds the red eyes of blue. I love Jesus, how about you? From sea to shining sea. That is why our services are three hours long. Yeah, I have bad credit because of my pastor. Yeah, I do, I do. Like, he would do these altar calls. He's like, if you need healing in your body, I want you to come on down. We're going to put a praise on it. If you need love in your life, I want you to come on down. We're going to put a praise on it. So, like, the next time my electric bill was due, 
I said, how much would you like to put down, Mr. Steele? I said, I want to put a praise on it. Can I get a praise on it? Uh, find out that that does not work at Georgia Electric. They do not accept praises. She said, Mr. Steele, this bill is 30 days past due. It needs to be paid in full. But I stood my ground. I want y'all to know I stood my ground in my faith. I said, y'all need to take that up with my pastor my church because he told me Jesus paid it all. So unless y'all want to accept Jesus, I'm going to do it. Separate note, I do have a GoFundMe page for my election. <laughs> yes. I got what what's your name, sir? Casey. Casey. Casey, how are you doing, Casey? Yo, you, oh, you're a Bulldog fan. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you a Falcons fan? Uh, okay, good, okay. So you won't get upset at my uh, Falcons, uh, Falcons Yeah. Right, are we have any Falcons fans? Awesome. This is awesome. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is okay. But don't tell anybody from Georgia. I'm from Georgia, so they will think I'm a traitor. But how are we doing, Jack? We doing okay? Okay. It's like, you got five more minutes, sir. Um, I, I will say this. I'm also horrible with directions. Yeah, uh, like, I, you know, I actually had a hard time finding this place. I was at the Lakewood Golf Course. <laughs> what? True story. I did about ten minutes, and uh, it went really well. Uh, you know, it's, a lot of wooded areas. Yeah, uh, this is a much better audience, though. Much better looking audience. But uh, yeah, horrible with directions. Now, I don't know why people ask me for directions. I have a lazy eye. I don't understand that, Jack. Uh, hey, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Just want to let you know. Uh, a lot of people get confused about that. Very, very interesting, though, because I can tell when it's starting to happen, because I'll be talking to somebody like Casey. I'll be talking to you, and, and y'all start doing this, like to try to play it off, like I can't notice you. Start doing this. <laughs> like who is he talking to? Y'all have to understand, like uh, that's very confusing for me too. Like cause the whole time you're doing this, I'm like who else is coming? Is somebody following you? Blink twice for yes. It's very confusing. But like I said, I'm horrible with directions and one of the things I'm grateful for is they have this new app called Waves. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a wonderful app. It's supposed to help you get where you're going with all these different voices. And one of the things I found out is one of the top downloaded voices for this app it's almost four today. Like, why would you do that to yourself? That's a thick accent. And number two, that's got to be the most violent road trip ever. I'm saying, if you're trying to get from like here to Florida, there's just Arnold yelling at you the whole trip. Get out of the lane, get out of the lane, the line. Get to me, the cops are coming. The cops are coming, get into the chapel. Ah, ah. I need something calm and soothing. Like Barack Obama has a calm, soothing voice. Uh, unless you're in a hurry. I'm just saying, if you got five minutes to get to work, you got a fork in the road, the last thing you want to hear is, uh, uh, let me be clear. You could go left. Or you could go right. But uh, what you don't want to do, what don't I want to do, Barack? You don't want to sit here. <laughs> which is what you're doing right now. In which way should I go, Barack? Well, that, 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 you could uh, make a U-turn, but I yes, can tell Sasha Malia, Barack, I don't have time for a Sasha Malia story. I'm trying to get to work. <laughs> yeah, well, that's when I thought about using Donald Trump as a GPS voice. Yeah, some of you know him. Okay. <laughs> I did, I thought about it, but then I realized, like some of you, that he might exaggerate the directions just a little bit. Like you're taking a slight right, next thing you hear your GPS talking about, okay, you're gonna take a huge turn. It's gonna be so huge, so you're gonna make your head spin. I don't know, people get very antsy about the whole election thing and politics, but the only thing I wish is that he had done it like Celebrity Apprentice. Because I would have loved to see Eddie Murphy as the Secretary of State. <laughs> yes, it would have been awesome. Eddie would have been like, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. It's going to be great. It's going to be famous. You will be president. I'll be Secretary of State. In the morning, I'll make you office. <laughs> she would have loved to have seen that. About these things, like one of the things I also think about, because like, one of my, one of my, um, I guess one of my issues is that I'm a bit of an introvert. 
like a lot of people have misconceptions about introverts. They think they don't want to talk to people, but I always tell people, it's like, we're not good at small talk. Perfect, perfect example. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm already exhausted. <laughs> we're not good at small talk. The thing with introverts, like, we, we want you to keep it moving. Like, if we ask you how you're doing, you know, it's okay to, what's a typical response? I'm doing all right. Yeah, we don't want the whole story, but some people, I see we got some extroverts here. Some people go a little, little extra with being an extrovert. Okay, there's two types of extroverts I've discovered. There's a depressed extrovert, and there's a very outgoing extrovert. You can tell the depressed extrovert as soon as you talk to him. You're like, hey, how you doing? As soon as you hear that, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and pull up a chair. So yeah, just cancel everything you have planned for the day. Like, how's it going? Uh, I can't call it, I can't call it, man. You know, like my mom, she got leprosy, yeah. Then my dad, you know, he went back to jail again, and these kids, they're growing like weed. I don't, I don't even know what to do anymore, I don't even know what to do. And you try, as an introvert, we try to empathize. Like, you know, it's gonna be okay, just hang in there, no worries, you know, that's what the millennials say. By the way, millennials, stop eating Tide Pods. When did this happen? Stop it, stop it. Yeah, because like, you know, these are the future. These kids are the future. You don't want to walk into a four-star restaurant like, I'll have some of your finest Tide Pods, please. <laughs> you saute them? I like mine sauteed. But yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to talk with the expert, like, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And he's like, no, you don't understand, man. I'm just going through a lot of stuff. I'm just going through a lot of stuff. But you know, I, I, I just, I need somebody to talk to. And you're trying, you know, you're running late for work. You're like, uh, well, just, uh, you know, call me, leave me a message. You know, uh, you know, have a good day. Like, you try to close it, but they don't see that as a closing, they see that as an opening. So that's when they're like, oh, so you're too busy to talk? You're too busy to talk? Oh, I guess Mr. Mr. Everything is going great in your life. Mr. Everything is going great. I guess you don't never have any problems, huh? Too good to talk to me. And then that's when, as an introvert, you want to snap and be like, you don't think I have problems? I have a lazy eye. <laughs> Nobody knows who I'm looking at half the time. Yeah, I have, I have problems too, just like you. You know, but I don't feel the need to talk about my whole life for an hour and 45 minutes. That's when they have Lifetime and, and all these different networks for it. Why don't you sell your story to Lifetime? And then that's when they come back with, that's why I don't like talking to you. That's why I don't talk to you. And then you have the outgoing extrovert. You can tell this person from the moment, like a mile away, because they walk differently. They walk differently as soon as you see them. <laughs> because they wave at people, like they think they're more popular than they actually are, like they wave at people that aren't there. Like they pass gas, caught it, and then let it go. And they always try to compete with you. They always try to compete with you. Like, hey, uh, how's it going, how's it going? I'm, I'm doing all right. Yeah, I just closed on my second house, just closed on my second house. You try to come back with something that's not as good, like, yeah, I just closed on my first month's rent, so I feel pretty good about that. Then they go to another level. They're like, yeah, I just, you know, sold my second car. I got about 50000 out for that one. I got 50000 uh, How you doing? It's like, uh, yeah, I sold my second car, too. Or oh, how much did you get for it? Uh, well, it broke down on the side of the road, so that's when I knew it was time to get a second car. <laughs> then they throw a little shade at you. Like, uh, you don't really have two cars, because the other one broke, so you really just have one. Like, excuse me, I have two cars. I just drive by the first one on the side of the road whenever I see it. Thank you very much. Then they want to tell you, oh, my kids are on the honor roll. My kids are on the honor roll. And your kids aren't on anybody's roll or anybody's list. So you just try to come up with something that's just as competitive. Like, you know, my kids, uh, we're on Angie's list. I don't know if you know what they're like. That's what we are. But yeah, so I try, like, I try to connect. And don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, like if you're stuck on the side of the road, as introverts, we're there to help you. If you need help studying for an exam, we're there. But like if your child is growing his or her third tooth, I'm probably not the person to call. Yeah, if you call me talking about, hey, Cyrus, Lil Marcus just grew his third tooth. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I'm going to focus on that word amazing, and I'm liable to go off. Be like, you know what's amazing? What's amazing is that the sun rises and the sun sets like clockwork every day. That's amazing. That's amazing. What's amazing is that the earth spins and tilts on its own axis every day, and we don't even feel it. That's amazing. That's amazing. What's amazing is that the Atlanta Falcons blew a 28-3 lead in the last Super Bowl. That's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you know, so I try to connect with people. And I, I, I'll say this, you know, before I go, like one of my things, like I noticed, like I said, with a, a lot of the world, a lot of people feel that we're very divided. But of course, uh, one of my heroes is Dr. King. 
And uh, a lot of my friends saw the movie Selma a few years ago. They were like, man, Dr. King had a lot of pressure on him. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like his kids had a lot of pressure, you know? Like, what if you hadn't cleaned your room all week? And Mr. I Have a Dream walked in and said, now I came in here on Monday, told you to clean your room. Came in here on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and still your room was a mess. Friday and Saturday rolled by, but today is Sunday, the Lord's Day, and I brought my belt. To help speed up that day, when all of your toys, the black toys, and the white toys, the blue toys, and the yellow toys, can join hands and sing the words of that old toy spiritual. Clean at last, clean at last, thank God Almighty, we are clean at last. Thank you so much. Okay, has anybody uh, has anybody hurt their side just yet from laughing so hard? That's, that's what, yes, right over here. Yes, you did. Okay, all right. Has anybody cried laughing yet? Anybody did that? Yes. Becky, I think I saw you crying back there. Yeah. I think that was during the birthday song though, but uh, uh, still there were tears, tears of joy there. You know, uh, and and right now, uh, you know, we're living in kind of a, a crazy time. You know, the economy's kind of like you know what it is and all of that. But uh, you know, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that uh, some people, like if they lost their job, they could still get work. Like, uh, like a TV evangelist. Uh, okay, <laughs> got some TV evangelist fans in here. Okay, so like a TV evangelist, if they lost their job, they could still get work selling cars on infomercials. Yeah, can you see that? Like you're flipping through the channels at night, and all of a sudden here he is, all for him. I'm sensing somebody out there needs the king of kings for the Ford's F-150. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and keep this thing rolling with our next comedian. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with this young man several times over, and uh, we've had a lot of great shows together, and this is going to be one more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, the very funny, oh, I'm sorry, you've seen him on The Tonight Show not once, not twice, but zero times. Please welcome Clay Burgos. <laughs> Thanks for, thank you for coming and for letting us be a part of this show. My mom was on the news the other day. My mom went a, went a shopping spree from a grocery store. And they said she had two minutes to run around and grab everything she could for free. She went straight for the cash register. <laughs> mm, I told her to go for the butter. In this economy, I cannot afford name brand butter. I cannot even afford regular generic butter. I have to buy generic, generic butter. It's called I can't believe I can't afford I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> mm. Sometimes I buy generic hand sanitizer. It's called soapy water. <laughs> Kills 99.9% of dirt. Our yard is all dirt. My mama taught me that old saying, the grass is always on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> that one takes a minute. One time I was out there barefoot and I got bit by a big fat ant. It was that piggy. <laughs> y'all can like y'all seen that piggy. That piggy's a big one. I kind of like Aunt Piggy, because she used to teach me all those old Alabama sayings. Like, uh, an apple a day will not keep the doctor away, but a restraining order will. <laughs> Don't count your chickens, because those chickens are not even your chickens. <laughs> if you're illiterate, you have to judge a book by its cover. <laughs> I need the Columbus people to explain that to the Phoenix City people. <laughs> I 
uh, they probably the stupid song. Where's the Where's the music guy in here, Sam? Uh, like, Ryan, Ryan. Right here. I think probably, sir. I'm sure you've heard a lot of songs. How many songs do you guess you've ever heard in your life? I don't really care. So <laughs> I think the stupidest song that I've ever heard is probably Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. How I wonder what you are is a star. Like you just said that. <laughs> I started a hotline for people who struggle with incompletion. Just dial 1 800. <laughs> That's the one y'all like the most? That one? <laughs> back in, I am from Alabama. I, back when I was growing up, in Alabama, we, we used to rank 49th in education. And I told my school teacher, she said, who got 40 10th? <laughs> I, like, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> but I do know I told that joke in Mississippi, they didn't get it. <laughs> I used to get a lot of A's on my report card. They're all at the top where it's Alabama. <laughs> Sometimes I got five or six A's because they spelled it wrong. <laughs> I just sat at my desk and sucked on sunflower seeds. So I was pretty disappointed when somebody else in my class got voted most likely to suck seed. <laughs> <laughs> you can go you can if you want, but I like that joke and I'm keeping it. <laughs> The big eared Mike got, he liked it, so that's for me and you, big eared Mike. <laughs> I lost eight pounds where, oh, well, before I tell you all that, I probably I should tell you all this. My mom used to send me to the, uh, the counselor every time I argued with my brother. It's probably because I'm an only child. <laughs> Do you remember those old commercials? Some of y'all look like you're, you're about my age, but remember that old commercial for sure deodorant? Raise your hand if you're sure. Remember that? My mom used to buy me perhaps deodorant. <laughs> Their slogan was perhaps you should keep your arms down. <laughs> and trust me, the expiration date at the bottom of deodorant is there for a reason. If you eat it after that, you will get sick. What's <laughs> me? I lost eight pounds with a generic weight loss program. It's called food poisoning. <laughs> Got a pretty good deal. It was buy one taco, get salmonella for free. <laughs> On a good day, my boss goes around saying that he feels like a million bucks. I'm like, good for you, but I cannot afford that. On a good day, I feel like a coupon. <laughs> They say he's shoplifted a bunch of stomach relief medicine. His prison nickname is Kleptobismol. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, he used to use one of those artificial tans in a bottle. You know what I'm talking about? So I wrote him a little poem. It's, um, <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue, but you are orange. <laughs> like I never said it was a good poem. I never said that. Even big, big ear Mike didn't like that one. So, I can see you. I'm looking at you, big ear Mike. This is a live show. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, what was your name right here? The, you're the only one that. That's, it's not like I'm Cyrus or something. <laughs> Now that you made me insult him, I'm just going to insult everybody. 
That's the way you gotta do it, Steve. So anyway, one time, I, I, you, I, can you look at me? Because I'm only talking to you right now. <laughs> you can talk to your wife any time, but like I was literally mid-sentence. He's like, he was muttering, and the gist of it was, I do not like this man. Which is fine, because I'm just trying to make Cyrus forget what I said about him. <laughs> anyway, so back in Auburn, uh, I, I had this uh, couple roommates, but we only had two bathrooms. So t me and one other guy named Nathan, the, the guy, you know, he, um, I don't even know if I should tell this, but I'm in too deep now. He, um, he, he, one time he put his toothbrush in my toothbrush cup, and he had his own toothbrush cup, so he didn't need to, right? So it bothered me, and so I wrote on a post-it note, my toothbrush is vastly superior to your toothbrush. Please, sir, kindly remove your toothbrush from my toothbrush cup. And I put it up on the mirror. Well, apparently Nathan did not appreciate that. And so he took down the post-it note, and on the back he drew a picture of little muscular arms, and he taped them to his toothbrush. And he laid my toothbrush out flat, so it looked like his toothbrush had, like, knocked out my toothbrush. No. And so when he was going, I took off the muscular arms and I taped on two little scrawny Q-tip arms. <laughs> and then I snapped one of the two the Q-tips. And so then he well, he got dental floss and he hung my toothbrush from the towel rack. Right? <laughs> so I gave my toothbrush when he was going. I gave my toothbrush a um, sharp kitchen utensil and I laid his toothbrush in a pool of ketchup. <laughs> And so then he stopped, look, Steve. If somebody had just walked in, I would love for them to see you lean back. Do you even know, do you even know Mr. Mike? No, I did not. Shh, shh. You are so talking. <laughs> are you heckling me now? I don't even know you. What, what do you want to say? Just say what you have to say. Man. I don't think that's his name. Mike? His name is Eddie. Oh, dang. Oh, Another comedy show to see what the comedy show is like because they didn't even like this. This is the So, I don't know. You keep your ears straight, Eddie. So, if I just wish somebody had just walked in and they see you lean back and said, What do you think, big ear, Mike? Just that one scene. I'm gonna think there's a video camera right there. I'm gonna edit out the part that just has you, Steve. Say, what do you think, big ear? Look at me, Steve! I'm not even trying to walk like this. You're releasing stress chemicals from my brain, making me do this, Steve. I forgot where I was in the set now. I think it was their fault. Hey, I'm gonna give this man a DVD. Hey, so, uh, listen, what, can, Miss Crystal, there's a backpack with a DVD. I'm sassing him so much. It all comes from a good place in my heart. They pay me to do whatever it is I'm doing here. And so, uh, you've been a great sport. But, uh, the, so anyway, the, where were we on the uh, toothbrush thing? Uh, I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I decided that I would put my, I would put my, um, here, here's a little CD for you. Thanks, so. It's five dollars. <laughs> Tried to start up a social media page 
for my um, toothbrush, and I did, but I didn't put his, like, I put my toothbrush on Facebook, so I did, you know, and I didn't put his toothbrush on any form of social media, so it looked like his toothbrush didn't even have a life. <laughs> You remember that, Steve? <laughs> I, uh, let's see what else. Um, what I, I got some things I'd like to tell you. I'm trying to see what I can condense because I have less time tonight than I like to do. But uh, it is what it is, right? So uh, one thing, my wife is here. She's not here very often. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this um, because I love her. And so um, she's wonderful in every way. But the one thing that... Uh, is, is a little so <laughs> and he's trying to save me he's like Shh. I said she's wonderful in every way and as soon as I said but he's like mm. <laughs> stop right there so uh, the one the one thing that she does a little a little weird is like um, she'll ask me weird questions sometimes that don't seem to make a ton of sense to me. Like the other night, I'm not making this up. She said out of the blue, I was completely un, um, un not expecting. It was caught off guard. She goes, "Would you still love me if I had a third eye?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Would you still love me if I had three eyes on my face? I said, sweetheart, you know I love you, but we cannot afford that kind of surgery right now. And so just to reinforce how much I love my wife, I decided to write her a little song. Here's the thing. I've destroyed the mic stand. I'm going to let my daughter's defense okay come hold the mic stand. And this is a song that I wrote uh, for my wife about her third eye. So if y'all could just give my girls a hand, they're going to come back. Says half off. 
Who booed just now? Who did? I'm trying real hard. I'm trying real hard right now. Um, was it Steve? <laughs> Now. People are heckling you now. Make sure you the five dollars I have uh, I have fuzzy arms. Like just to back it up, I want to show see see like okay, when I say I have man arms, obviously I don't have like large arms, but that's a that's a furry arm. I don't know if you didn't tell, but just trust me, it's furry. So my mother-in-law, she bought me one of those watches that um it was like I'm trying to see if I can see somebody who has one. It's like the metal brackets, the expandable kind. Does that make sense? Ma'am, yours is close to it. Would you mind raising your hand up? Uh, yeah, do you see how it's got the... Steve has one. Yeah, like that here. Can I see your watch for a minute, Steve? <laughs> Alright, so... The, that's fair. So, uh... Did, did Big Ear Mike say that? Or... I thought that we were friends. Okay, so, anyway, it, it's the middle kind of expanse. It pinched my arm here, like, really bad. <laughs> And so when my wife wasn't looking, I did the only logical thing I could think of. I, I ended up shaving a three-inch ball band around my left arm. And when she noticed, she said it looked like a Sasquatch had wrist surgery. So I ended up shaving my entire left arm so I wouldn't look stupid. And um, whenever I crossed, whenever I crossed my arms, it looked like a albino snake was suffocating a fuzzy caterpillar. <laughs> But I kind of liked it because whenever I went to work and we had a vote, I just raised both my hands. Everybody thought it was two different people. <laughs> hey, baby. Um, so, uh, let's see. Do we have any school teachers in here? Yeah. So, what do you teach? Science. Science? What grades? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. What, and I saw a couple. She's preschool. Preschool? Gotcha. Bless your heart. So, uh. The eighth grade, what, what age is that? 13. Thir 13. So, okay, I teach my day job. Obviously, this isn't my day job. <laughs> so, um, I teach uh, at Auburn High School the, the 10th through 12th grade. And don't look down to me that teenagers are like sharks. And I'm sure you've noticed this too, but this is a scientific fact. Sharks can smell um, one drop of blood from two miles away. That's amazing. But teenagers can do something even more amazing. Teenagers can psychologically scar their school teacher until he goes into an emotional shell himself and finds himself doing research on things like, hey, what can a shark smell? <laughs> <laughs> so what they'll do is they'll find your weak point and exploit it. Like uh, one day, I don't, this is like nine years ago, out of the blue, I don't even know why I asked, this kid in my class, about where, about where you're sitting, Jack, he goes, hello, Mr. Cox, do you like corn? I was like, nah, I don't care for it. He said, you don't like corn, huh? And so for the rest of the day, he just sat there and talked about nothing but corn for like an hour. <laughs> just because I didn't like it. And then the next day, him and he got this table of friends to talk about exclusively corn for like a, the 96-minute block class. You know, and they'd say stupid stuff. They'd say like, who's your favorite general in history? Is it General Cornwallis? <laughs> So what are you doing? And so uh, I teach him how to use Photoshop. That's what I do. And so this one kid took a picture of me, and he replaced and Photoshop my head with an ear of corn. <laughs> and then he typed out corn on the cocks. <laughs> and then one girl used Photoshop to give me a unibrow. But it was unibrow made out of little yellow kernels. <laughs> And then they all started calling me Unicorn. <laughs> so one morning, I walked out on my front porch, like at my house where I live, and there was an ear of corn at, at my house, and there was a note beside it, and I picked it up and said, this is just the beginning. What the hell? <laughs> so I went and I told my principal, just so he'd kind of know, you know, what was going on, and he said, Mr. Cox, I don't care what those teenagers say, out of all the, out of all the teachers here, I think you're the cream of the crop. <laughs> so, um, another thing, uh, I, uh, I'm an artist. Do we have any artists in here? Jack, what do you like? To, you are, I've seen you in a magazine before, haven't I? You like to draw pictures, right? Let me ask you a question, Jack. When somebody finds out you're an artist, 
I'm guessing what they say to me, I'm guessing, I, I just don't want to see this is like for all artists. What they say is, oh, you're an artist? I cannot even draw a, what? What do they say to you? Stick man. A stick man. Yes, thank you, Jack. Did y'all hear? <laughs> but if you, oh, here's the thing. If you're not an artist and you say that joke, it ain't funny. Okay? So, like, everybody makes that joke. Oh, you're an artist? I cannot even draw a stick man. Right? That's not funny. And so I started wondering, what do these people who make that joke say when they meet somebody with any other profession? Right? Like, uh, hello, how are you doing there, ma'am? It's nice to meet you. What's your name? Deborah. It's great to meet you. And you're a professional acupuncturist. That's right. I cannot even stick a stick man. <laughs> so what's your name back here? Michael, it's nice to meet you. And you're an accountant. I cannot even count a stick man. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> and you're a professional truck driver, that's great. I cannot even drive a stick, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir, what's your name? Elijah. Elijah? And you're a male model. <laughs> you look like a stick, man. <laughs> Hello, sir, what's your name here? Victor, and you're a congressman? I can do that. <laughs> I, uh, I have two little girls. I'll tell you about them in just a minute and go. Hey, do we have time for like a quick story before I land the plane, Sam? Sure. Sir, that did not sound like Sam. <laughs> uh, so, here's the thing. This is relatively new. Um, so, I don't know how funny it's going to be, but we need to try new material. And uh, obviously, like, I'm not going to be hired back here anyway, so why not try it? So, uh, we, we had a dog. My, first of all, I don't buy name brand Oreo cookies often because they're expensive. And we're on a budget, right? But my mother-in-law, she bought me some um, name brand Oreos. And you know, they come like 40 per pack. And I had eaten three of them. So there's, like, I'm from Alabama, but I know there's still 37 Oreos left in there. <laughs> and so I went to church. Came back that night, and my dog looked like she had committed homicide. Like, you know, you know that look that dogs have when they have done something wrong. She, she knew she was guilty. And I'm like, you better have killed someone, because I better have 37 Oreo cookies in there. And I looked, and sure enough, there's the pack of Oreos, and every last one was gone. There was not a crumb of Oreo cookies left. So the dogs aren't supposed to eat chocolate, right? And so I called my vet buddy. Um, are you impressed, Steve, that I have like a vet friend? <laughs> I called him up and I said, well, my dog ate 37 Oreos, so what do you recommend I do about that? And he said, well, you need to make her vomit. And I was like, well, how, how do you recommend I do that? Like, that's not something you just do, you know? So he said, give her two, not, not teaspoons, but tablespoons full of hydrogen peroxide. That should do it. And I was like, all right, friend. So I got, I got one tablespoon full of hydrogen peroxide. And I said, come here, dog. <laughs> and the dog spoke to me. The dog said, I don't know if you remember, but I just devoured 37 Oreo cookies. Like, I'm pretty full right now. So you're going to have to wait till later. And uh, so what I ended up having to do, when I went to the dog, she just did what dogs do and like, you know, snooted and did her, her nose up. So I got a, a syringe and I got, you know, the whole tablespoon full of hydrogen peroxide and the dog's like looking at me like dogs do, trying to creep away, you know. So I ended up getting some cheese and uh, I put it right up on top of the syringe and like, do you want some cheese? And the dog was like, I would love some cheese. So when she came up to bite the cheese, I squeezed it and it went down her throat. And she reacted exactly like you'd expect any beast that just had hydrogen peroxide forced down its throat. You know how it bubbles and fizzes and stuff like that? So that's one. He said to do two. So I got another syringe full of hydrogen peroxide and I got another thing of cheese. I was like, 
do you want some more cheese? <laughs> and then I was like, as bad as that hydrogen peroxide was, that cheese was great. So knowing full well that she's about to have hydrogen peroxide or <laughs> stuff. She came again, and I got her again. And so um, she gagged like anything, but she didn't, she didn't, I hate to say it, but she didn't like throw up, you know what I mean? And so uh, I came in the next day, I'd been teaching all day, I was exhausted, the kids had been teenage, you know how teenagers are, came in, came in, I was like, hey family, I'm home. And immediately the dog on the carpet, boom, you could have counted 37 or 8 or 50 <laughs> So I decided what I was going to do next time is if she ever did that again, I was going to give her some Hershey's Kisses to kill that dog. <laughs> I don't have a good ending. That's the dog I have. So, I, so uh, I got one more quick thing, and then I'll tell you about my daughters, and I'll get out of here. So um, my, I don't know if I can move this chair or not. We'll just use this. So my friend Timmy Bagwell, he was an eighth grader um, when I was an eighth grader. We were in the same class. He was like a head taller than the rest of the class. He was a, a big boy for an eighth grader. And he couldn't quite dump, but he said if I would hold a chair for him, that he would like run and he would jump off the chair and dunk. He was like, will you hold the chair for me? And I said, yes, I will. And I meant it at the time. I really did. And um, when he turns to get a running start, I became tempted to sin. And um, it was almost like the little dead one angel, you know, like not literally, but it felt like it was like, no, Clay, he's your, he's your best friend. You should hold the chair. I was like, that's a good, reliable point. Thank you for that. But then the dark side was like, I wonder what would happen if you jerked the chair away. I'm from Alabama. Like, we hadn't learned about gravity yet. I was only in eighth grade. <laughs> So I'm, I'm trying to deliberate back and forth, and meanwhile Tim's taking these like baby steps, and each step he, he takes is getting bigger and faster, and he's looking at the chair. <laughs> I guess he didn't trust me to, you know, to hold it at first. So finally he gets about two steps away, and uh, he finally thinks, well, I, I have to trust him now. So he starts looking up, and about then I remembered how Charlie Brown would try to kick the ball, and Lucy would jerk the football away, and he'd go fine. And at the end of the day, like, honestly, he seems just fine. And so... <laughs> you look like you're in about the eighth grade. If you ever do this, you're a terrible person. But this is not the point of this. So we, what grade are you in? In the eighth grade. Do it. So who said do it? This is the reason. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh. <laughs> so anyway, Tim, he, he stopped looking at the chair, he's looking up. So the last, the last step was not going to be an ordinary step. It was going to be like an athletic pounce. And it wasn't going to be off the ground. It was going to be from like a foot and a half off the ground, right? The only problem was that the chair was gone. And Tim went, boom! He went from vertical to horizontal. That's what anybody ever saw. He laid there for minutes just moaning on the floor. I fell down laughing. It's the funniest thing I ever saw with my eyes. I would never do that again. You should not do that again, you dang teenager. Um, <laughs> the point of telling that story is Tim Bagg will put his faith in me to hold the chair. And I was not a reliable object for him to put his faith in, obviously. He trusted, he put his faith in me, and he fell flat and got hurt, right? So uh, when it comes to eternity, this I know this is not like a, a sermon or something like that. Very briefly, uh, there's only one reliable object for us to put our faith in. That's Jesus Christ alone. I have a great grandfather. He was a pastor for 54 years, same church. He's a great guy. Can't give me to heaven. You know, I go to a great church. I'm a member of a Bible preaching church. Great church. They can't give me to heaven. Only Jesus can, can get me to heaven. Um, I'm not going to preach to you, but I'll tell you, on my website, there's nothing for sale. There's not a store on my website. Does that make sense? So it's not like I'm going to get your money or something like that. But on the website, there's a link that says uh, the word gospel. It doesn't have, like, my opinion. It has sermons about how can you um, know Jesus the one way to get to heaven. Does that make sense? So tonight, if you got nothing better to do, which you don't, what better could you have to do? Um, you can click on there and see what does the Bible say about how I can know the one who can give me heaven. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about my daughters and get out of here. So uh, we have two uh, sweet <laughs> little daughters. <laughs> um, one is, well, actually one is sweet and quiet, and the other one's Cassidy. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I told him the story about David and Goliath, 
and I picked up their, uh, <laughs> their excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat tonight. I, I picked up their blanket and I showed them what a slingshot was like and I twisted it around and I told them, you know, that they could kill Goliath. And so they didn't say anything for like an hour. And I was about to walk out the door to go do a show. And, and Cassie picked up her blankie. She came up to me. She said, Daddy, please don't go. And I said, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I, I got to go do a show. That girl started twisting that blankie. She goes, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I was about maybe two steps from an airplane. I'm in Atlanta. I'm about to fly to Boston. And uh, my wife called. And I said, sweetheart, I can't really talk right now. She said, let me just tell you. I asked Cassidy to, to uh, do you want to pray for Daddy to have a safe trip to Boston? And she was a little big girl. She said, no. <laughs> Let's just pray Daddy has a safe trip to heaven. <laughs> So this time, look, just come and y'all hold it, uh, but let Daddy do the song. How about that? So, one more hand for my little girls. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a random conglomeration of arbitrary vowels. E-I-E-O. With an E here and an I there. Another E, another I, then comes a random O. Old MacDonald had a phonics problem. E-I-E-I-O. He probably went to the, the University of Alabama. <laughs> and on that farm, he had a bird. E-I-E-I-O. With a here and a there, here, there. It must have been a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> and on that farm, this time it was a it was a regular bird. It wasn't a flightless bird like a like a penguin or an ostrich or it wasn't like a it was an emu or something. It was a flight full. It was like a feathered bird, like a tweeting, like the like a. It could have been a um, I don't know like a blue jay or a canary or maybe like even one of those little blue speckled e e e with a. Here, there, here, there. It was a dead bird. <laughs> this is brought to you by Chick Fil A. <laughs> and on that farm, he had a comedian who still had 22 seconds left to fulfill with Sam Beeman. E I E I O. Got a contract. <laughs> With a uh, blah blah here and a blah blah there, here blah there blah everywhere, blah 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 here and a blah blah there, here blah 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 Um, okay, so I want to uh, I want to bring up somebody up on stage real quick. Hope, uh, Hope, would you come up here real quick? Yes. Hope, come up here. All right. Uh, so this is this is my friend Hope Johnson. Hi. Everybody say hi, Hope. Okay. So uh, so Hope, she she's a photographer. Tell them the name of your business. Little Sun, like Sun in the Sky, photography. All right, Little Sun Photography. So be sure to check her out on Facebook. Uh, if you need any pictures done at your wedding or uh, any kind of uh, like self-portraits or oh, there's all kind of things, right? For, uh, 
Um, birthday parties, um, family photos, any kind of holiday. Bar mitzvahs? Bar mitzvahs, yes. I can mean, always do a bar mitzvah. I would be glad to do something like that. Yes. And so, uh, so Hope here, we wanted to recognize her because she comes to about every comedy show that we do, and we do a lot of shows, right, Tim? Uh, Tim and I and Clay, and uh, we, like, even over in Auburn, Alabama. The family portrait, hey. Uh, so she, so right there. I had to think I had to she is always working. So, uh, so if you want to get in touch with her after the show, be sure to check her out. Little Sun Photography. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and I'd like to bring out the comedians on stage real quick. Cyrus, Tim, Clay, and Kristen. You guys come up here real quick. Yes. Fellas. And ladies, all right, so uh, so we can, uh, th these are all of your comedians tonight. Have you had a good time with these guys? <laughs> we, uh, we, again, you know, we're very thankful for all of our sponsors for uh, for this event, um, and also for uh, Cable TV of East Alabama, CTV Beam, who, yes, waving to the cameraman in the back there. Uh, so Cable TV of East Alabama is actually uh, filming this, so this will be on local access uh, cable. So be sure to tell your friends and neighbors if you live in Phoenix City that, hey, they can watch it here. Uh, <laughs> yes. So literally not for every show in the future we can be like, I've been on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can, yeah, and uh, so uh, what I want to say um, as we close tonight is all of us comedians up here, we, uh, we travel all over. Some travel a little further than others, uh, like Kristen and, uh, and Clay. These guys have been up to Canada. A. A? Yes? Yes. Canada. Who's from Canada? All right, okay. <laughs> she said, I am, I am. All right. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so basically we do this all over uh, whenever called for. So if you would like to bring a comedy show to your church or your corporate event, a cookout. I think you said you want to do a cookout, right? Yeah, you want to do a cookout. All right. Uh, or Chick-fil-A, yes. Um, hey, we would love to bring this comedy show to you. Uh, so get in touch with any of us comedians after the show. Uh, or check us out online. And I believe uh, we're going to be running some of the web websites at the end of the credits here. So thank you again, guys. We really appreciate it. God bless.